I don't just ate a crankbait. Not bad, right? Oh, can you see him? I'll let him go. So this is the practice video. Oklahoma, uh, you follow Oklahoma, not you follow Alabama. You follow Oklahoma. Uh, how many times can you say ah oh, in the first 30 seconds of a video? I'm not really sure. But this is actually my last day of practice. I didn't practice, I didn't video the first two days because I was really wanting to focus on catching fish. This is a place we've never been before. Not really sure how it's gonna shake out. Right now I'm just taking this hella crawl. I'm just washing it down the banks, some of these little rock, steep rock banks and stuff. These fish are spawning on these banks. You can't see them though. All these little banks like this, if, if, if it was clear, you'd be able to see them down there spawning, but obviously you can't because it's muddy. I'm just taking it, just hopping it down. It's not much of a ledge. Like I'm setting it six foot, just casting it up there. It's like a little creek channel ledge. The other side, other side over here is completely flat. This side has like just a little, you know, six foot drop, six and a half foot drop. That's enough. That's enough to hold a fish. Hopefully we can catch one. There's so many boats here right now. I kind of like flip this thing in picked up another rod I'm not getting many bites I know it's not a big fish but I'm not getting many bites so I'm hiding every fish that I catch it's just a mental thing it probably doesn't matter if I'm catching the other guy probably is too but you just don't want to it's just for me I feel better feeling like that I'm keeping a secret even if it matters it doesn't matter just kind of slid him over the side it makes these vlogs hard to do in competition like this because you just got you just got to be safe out here you got to <laughs> it's like it's like your parents used to tell you people in school used to tell you back when you were a kid in high school you just got to use protection Spirit bait. It's on old Oklahoma special, what I call it, just a single. I took one of the Z-Man sling blades and modified it a little bit. That one, if I had to guess, that's a two pounder or so. I'll show you my spinner bait. Now I haven't caught the most of them on spinner bait this week, but this is Z-Man sling bait. Ooh, this is a Z-Man sling blades. You get that out half ounce you can see i just got one blade on it you won't find that blade combination in the stores we're working on it i'm actually going to try to come out with a line of uh sprinter base for z-man but i took put a big number six colorado blade single colorado if you're looking to move more water with your spinner baits use a single colorado take take off the the tandem just a single blade just like this one move a lot more water also change up the skirt went with a living rubber skirt it's not a living rubber this is an old school rubber i'm sorry old school rubber skirt put that on there just a uh swimming trout trick for a trailer and just out here getting after it you know what i'm saying i'm out here getting after it i've caught a couple the first day on it today most of my bites have come on the gremlin I really haven't caught many on this today. Um, the Gremlin and the Helicross is where most of my bites have come off of today. 
because I got more on that flipping bite more so than the chunk and winding bite because I think a lot of them are spawning anyway. So that's where that's coming from. But we're going to keep fishing this around here because this water is pretty stained. There's got to be a big population of fish that spawn back in here somewhere though because, I mean, just look at it. It's, it's just looks like it's, it's huge backwater. I, just, I wish I could show it to you on the map. Maybe I will. I'll show it to you on the map. This, uh, it's a big creep, but this whole thing is flat back here. There's stumps and timber and trees back here. Only thing is, I feel like this holding it back from being an exceptionally great place right now is the fact that it's, it's very muddy back here. Like it's very turbulent. Like it's push, it's not, obviously it's not too muddy to, to not catch one, but it's pushing it. It's definitely pushing it. Like if we got a big rainstorm, this would probably be the end of this. And I don't think it's rained in a while here, but yet it's still pretty, pretty washed out. It's funny, I came in here the first day of practice and I don't remember it being, I don't remember it being quite as muddy as it is now. And we haven't had any rain and it still got muddier. Hey, this month we're celebrating Mondo Mania. We've got tons of gear, tackle, rods, reels, baits, everything you need to catch fish in the spring. Plus, every order over $50 is gonna get a free Mondo kit. Make sure you check this out, you don't wanna miss it. Go to shopcarls.com, get in on Mondo Mania. Don't miss this one. Here's a little mid-morning check-in. I just been riding around checking some stuff that I saw on Google Earth last night i haven't really caught much yet i did catch one that doesn't sound like much but for me it's stuff as efficient has been catching one is a red flag that something's going right because i fished a lot of water background on the lake 100,000 acres i think it's like 106,000 acres but oddly enough the lake is fishing super small mainly because there's only a marginal part is that how you say that a small part of the lake is fishable just the water is very turbulent like when i say turbulent like it's muddy and not the good kind of mud when you look down in the water you just see the sediment down in it crappy guys are catching them still but i haven't really did that much with it so we're gonna keep moving around i've tried some weird stuff this morning now i'm going to go back to stuff that i feel like is more reliable to work for the tournament so let's throw it on pad Let's throw it on pad and go look for Chad. Hey guys, I know I'm here practicing for the tournament here at follow, but I gotta take a second to give everybody a shout out that fish my online tournament series for the month of March. Dude, if you're not already in the tournament, you like, what are you doing? We're giving away so many awesome prizes for the straight up fishing classics. Registration is open for the May tournament right now. Stop this video right now, wherever you are. If you wanna get in my tournaments, go to shopblat.com. All you have to do is make one purchase to get in the tournament. But listen, we're giving away awesome gear. The winner of the last tournament, we gave him a Motor Guide XI3 kayak trolling motor, plus gear, plus tackle, plus apparel. Over $1,500 that he won on literally no entry fee. We're paid, giving away some of the best gifts that you could ever give. Give away. Paying out first through 10th place. The top 40 will bring them to a championship. Where we're going to, last year we gave away a boat at the championship bradford van denmark won the championship won a boat so listen go to shopblat.com make a purchase register for the tournament the next one starts may 1st through may 30th you can fish any time that you want to you can fish on the weekends you can fish after work you can fish before work at school on your lunch break it's on your home time the entire month of march your five biggest bass you get in the tournament, it's an inches based tournament. 
It's so much fun and you can win gear without having to pay for it. So I just had to thank everybody that is uh, that's participated in the tournament so far. I'm looking forward to this month and seeing everybody's catches. So check it out. Just go do it, dude. No reason not to. There's a bite. Feels like a pretty good one. It's a bite. I think I'm gonna set the hook. Missed it. Dang. <sighs> You're always like torn or whether you should set the hook or not on these things. I didn't feel like a giant just then, but it's the only two reasons I don't want to set the hook sometimes. One is one is there's another boat behind me in this little pocket. Secondly, if he's a five pounder, I'm pissed. If he's a two pounder, I'm pissed at this point. This fishing really hasn't been that great at all. And I feel like, I feel like a lot of these fish are spawning. I could be wrong. I really think a lot of them are spawning. So, you know, you don't want to go, you don't want to mess that up. <laughs> Lack of better terms, you just don't want to mess that up. That's three or four bites right down through here on this little stretch. But anyway, I think I kind of got a little bit of idea how I can catch a couple of fish. So I want to I want to ride around before dark today and lay my eyes on a couple things because uh, practice is not that great this time. But I do think I know how to catch some. There's a bite. I think I'm gonna set the hook. I'm gonna see what we got. That's a keeper. Oh, he come off. That was a keeper. Right where he's supposed to be, though. See this little, it's like a little 45 degree bank right here. Literally, all of my bites come towards the back. You get towards the back, it's like spawning flat. You got a little 45 degree angle bank right here. Boy, he hit him with zooming with it, too. That's good. It's good. The thing I like about it is I'm getting the bites in the same spots. You know, if you can get to where you get your bites in the same, like, you know, you, you can almost call it. It's pretty windy today. I'm sure y'all haven't struggled with the issues. Struggle with these. It's pretty windy today. I guess y'all can tell the audio's kind of blown out. It's, it's just, it's pretty windy out here today. Which uh, I think it's supposed to be windy for the tournament too. Which throws in another monkey wrench to everything everybody's doing because if it's 20 miles an hour or more, we don't go out. And I'm thinking it's supposed to be 20, 20 miles an hour Friday on the first day of the tournament. Maybe the second day too. Which could get interesting. If we have two days of 20 mile an hour wind, what do we do then? Don't know. Good grief, look at him running out here. I think I should set the hook. I'm gonna set the hook, let's see what we got. Oh God, it's a good one, y'all. That's a catfish. Holy smokes, that was a catfish. He donked that thing so hard. I was like, oh my God, if that, I was like, if that is a keeper, that thing hit it so hard. It was a catfish. Right now, I think there's a shad spawn going on, honestly. So right now I'm actually just going down the bank and uh, throwing a crankbait down some rocks. Scene. Practice is winding down. This is always that icky feeling at the end of practice where you know you really haven't quite got on to what you want to get on in order to do well. But even though I haven't caught that many and not that many big ones today, I do see where this could go really well. 
I could also see where this could, I could go home. It could be a long 12 hour drive. Or small, even the large amount are about the size of a deli meat from Walmart with pepperoni size. This is a new creature bait that I made with Z Man. This bait right here is called the Gremlin. It is, I don't know, maybe four inches. You can see the profile of it. This is a black and blue one. I've only got two colors in it because it's just prototype. It's ready to hit the market though but you'll be able to get this bait pretty soon i think uh next spring for sure but i'll call all my fish all my better fish this week on this one right here it's just a texas rig creature bait called the gremlin Spotted bass. Look at that. If he ain't about a good loaf of bread size bass, I ain't never seen one. Spotted bass. Ooh, he stinks. things are doing I, I mean I guess I didn't know they did have spotted bass down here but why are they up here shallow like this I have no idea I'm literally fishing in a couple feet of water I don't think a single bite I've had in here has been a large mouth not a single one I, I, I don't know I gotta go home one of these days I, I mean this year I'm gonna put together a vlog where I'm gonna say, look, I got three pounders over here. I'm gonna go catch them first. And then about 10 o'clock, we're gonna go do this and we're gonna do that. It ain't gonna be this vlog. You're just gonna have to wait. That's it. I'm done. Practice is over for me here at uh, Ufala. I had to think about what the name of it was. Let me ask you something. Something I was thinking about on the drive back last night. Do you think forward facing sonar is going to play in this tournament? Let me know in the comment section. Do you think the forward facing sonar phenomena is going to be a factor in this tournament? My initial reaction is absolutely no. I'm going to tell you why. A lot of time we over dramatize forward facing sonar. Everyone believes that you have to have it to be competitive in 
every tournament. That's not completely true. I really believe you're going to see that in this tournament. It's probably not going to play. The reason is, when things set up, you can't beat forward facing sonar when it sets up for that. Two things I think is going to take it out of play this week. The water clarity. It's muddy. Forward facing sonar tournaments have to be tournaments where fish can visually see your bait. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use forward facing sonar in this tournament to maybe find a piece of structure that you couldn't normally see. Uh, maybe you find some boulders on a point. Or maybe you find some uh, some timber or something like that that you can't visually see with your own eye. But I don't I don't see you being able to see fish setting out in the middle of a pocket around piece of structure, brush piles, etc. And cast into them and catch them. The water's just too dark. Fish are not seeing your baits. They're actually feeling them with their lateral lines. So I, I feel like that water conditions, along with the fact that it's just a pre-spawn tournament, and we know what fish do during the pre-spawn, they go shallow. Um, your electronics just don't come into play that much. Maybe you can use your mapping to find either creek turns or flats, find places where fish are going to set up. But for seeing fish on your electronics, not going to happen in this tournament. I don't see that being a part of at least the top 10 successful guys in this this particular event also a reminder i have my online tournament series and the registration is open now if you guys want to register for my personal online tournament series listen last month the winner received over fifteen hundred dollars in gear a new motor guide xi3 kayak troller motor we're giving away at every single one of the classic tournaments this year i just gave away one plus a bunch of other gear apparel and tackle get in that online tournament series it's super easy and you get to fish on your own time not just on saturdays not just on sundays you can fish after work on the weekends before work on your lunch break whenever you have time it's a month-long tournament you get in the tournament by just buying one item on the store during the registration period. Doesn't matter how much that item costs. It can be a dollar or it can be a thousand dollars. Whatever fits your fancy gets you into the event. So make sure you do that. You can win a lot of gear, a lot of really good prizes. All right. I'm going to be honest with you. I was about to say, I hope it helps you, but I know it's not going to help you. But maybe it'll make you want to watch the tournament video. At this point, as my dad says, it is what it is. Hopefully I can figure out how to catch a couple. Thank you.